Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be going over one of my favorite openings, and that's the fried liver attack. And it starts with pawn 2e4, pawn e5, knight f3 development, knight c6 development, and bishop to c4, the Italian game. Now, I do want to let you know that the fried liver attack is a very, very aggressive opening, so if you're not an aggressive player, Feel free to watch this video and enjoy it and learn something hopefully, but you're probably not going to like this opening. A lot of times people who are very passive like to kind of build up in a defense, get into the end game, methodically win a game. I don't really play like that. I like to attack, 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 and win the game early um, and as fast as I possibly can. But that's not everyone. So. With that said, from here you're really going to see two things. If you see the bishop come down to c5, which is very common the Gioco Piano, you can bring your pawn to b4. And I say this only because this is the Evans Gambit. I play it very frequently, and it is very aggressive. So if you're already getting ready for the fried liver attack, then if they do play bishop to c5, go ahead and have something in your back pocket if they don't play the two knights defense, which the fried liver attack comes from. But if they don't play bishop to c5 here, then more than likely you will see the knight come to f6. Very common move from black. It's the two knights defense against the Italian game. And from here, here's really where the fried liver attack takes off. White's going to continue with knight to g5. And as you can already see, we're starting to put a lot of pressure on this f7 pawn. As many of you know, the f7 pawn is a key weakness for black. And in the last video, we talked about if you play e4, then you're going to have a lot more opportunities to attack this pawn on f7, this square in particular. As you can see here, we already have two of our minor pieces keying down on this f7 square. So black from here more than likely will, br will bring his pawn to d5. This is the main line that you'll see. Trying to alleviate some of this pressure, and at the same time he has two defenders against this pawn here. So he's trying to block off this bishop that's eyeing down on this pawn on f7 since we do have an additional defender here with our knight on g5. So from here, we are going to take with our pawn. This pawn really does nothing for us in the fried liver attack, so we're just going to go ahead and get rid of it. And the knight's now going to come to d5. Again, he can't bring his queen here because then we would just take his queen. But at the same time, he still wants to alleviate some of this pressure against this f7 square. So he needs to take back and again we are attacking his knight here on c6 so you're gonna see his knight come to d5 and as you can see here now white has an option that he can choose to do and that is take on f7 and that's the fried liver attack and from here as you can see that we're attacking not only this queen here on d8 but we're also attacking this rook here on h8 so from here although I'm not gonna say good or bad Black really needs to take this knight on f7 because it's attacking not only this queen but this rook here. So if he doesn't take, then we're going to take one of these pieces. We're going to not only be up this pawn on f7, but we're also going to be up this exchange for either a rook or a queen. And from here, this is where it really gets aggressive because White's just going to start to throw everything at the king and try to win the game by checkmate early on in the game. Now I do want to let you know I'm going to be going over a lot of the main moves and a few of the variations that you may see, but keep in mind in the fried liver attack there are many, many, many different types of games that can be played. So if I don't cover every single game, don't freak out and say, Kevin, you didn't cover such and such because there's just hundreds and hundreds of different variations. But I will go over some of the main points that you do want to keep in the back of your mind when you do play the fried liver attack. And a lot of the moves are the same over and over. So as long as you know the main moves, then you'll be completely okay. The next move is queen to f3, and then king to e6. Now this is very important because, again, keep in mind, we now, even though we're attacking this king on f7, and we've gained a tempo here, developed our queen, and forced the king to move his, black to move his king here, he still needs to defend this knight on d5. If he doesn't bring his king to e6, then we can go ahead and take this knight here on d5 and really have a good game. And also keep in mind, if he tries something really bad, like king to g8, then we can bring our bishop, take on d5. He can't move his king here, so he can take with his queen. We can take back with our queen, check, 
but the only move that he has is bishop to e6, and then we take and it's checkmate. So just keep in mind, he could make some bad moves um, if he wanted to, but his best move is going to be e6. The really only other move that I have seen is king to e8, but then keep in mind that we can bring our bishop to d5 take, and he can't take back because our queen here on f3. As you can see already, we're up in material, and at the same time, we have a lot of aggressive momentum that we have going on here. We're looking at queen to f7 for checkmate. Um, our bishop is still very active, and this is going to be a very good game for white. If he tries to block this with queen to e7, again, he doesn't have a lot of options to protect this f7 square. Then we can bring our bishop to c6, take on this. And then he really needs to move his king here. If he takes with his pawn on b6, then we can retake, I'll show you here, and check, and at the same time, we are attacking this rook on a8. So again, black's just in a very bad, bad position if he brings his king to g8 or e8. And also, if we come back to it, even if he doesn't do that, if he just tries king to e7, well, this is just a really bad spot for him. One, he's going to lose this knight, but at the same time, now he's completely blocked off his bishop, his dark square bishop here on f8. So not only is he going to be down a lot of material, but he can't even develop his pieces. So this is going to be very good for white. But most of what we're going to be talking about today is king to e6, since this is the most common, and this is really what king the black king really has to play in order to continue to have a fighting chance. Now from here, white's going to continue with knight to c3. And all these moves so far, this queen to f3 and this knight to c3, they're all going to be the same. So don't worry about, ah, you know, how do I remember all these moves? The few beginning moves in the fried liver attack are all the same here. As you can see, this is not only a development move, but this is a strong move because we're only adding more pressure on this knight on d5 and the square in general. And he can't take this knight. He, again, he can't even move this knight because it's being pinned down with our bishop here on c4. So from here, black really has two options that you will see. The first one is bringing his knight to b4. And he's doing two things. He's trying to alleviate some of this pressure on d5 by adding another defender. But at the same time, he's eyeing down this pawn here on c2. Now from here, there are a few moves. I'm going to go ahead and recommend what I like the best. But there are a few moves that you can do here. One of the most popular moves is pawn to a3. And what this really does is it kind of forces black to bring his knight to c2. And you're like, well... Kevin, you know, we're forcing this knight to take our rook on a1. But if you play the fried liver attack enough, you really know that it's all about the active pieces that you have. And usually, this rook here on a1 doesn't get a lot of play. So if we can sacrifice this rook to get this knight here out of the way, that's completely fine. So from here, our, our king is going to come to d1, and then the knight's going to come to a1 and capture. And this is completely fine because now we're just going to start to throw everything in the kitchen sink at the black king, and we've really just removed this defender here. So again, this is a very aggressive opening, and we're going to be sacrificing, trying to win the game early on. Now from here, White's going to continue, and he's going to capture with his knight on d5. Really putting his knight in a great spot. At the same time, Black really needs to bring his king to d6. He can't bring it along this f file. But if he doesn't move his king, then we're going to have a discovered attack once we move our knight here. Now from here, White can continue. He really wants to move this pawn on d on this d file so he can activate his dark square bishop. And this is a great spot for it because this pawn here on e5 is only getting out of our way. And this pawn we don't really care about. We're just mostly focused with our major pieces and our minor pieces here. So after he takes, we can now bring our bishop to f4, attacking. And this is going to be a very easy win from white. The king's out in the middle, and we have all of our pieces attacking the black king. The next thing you might see, instead of taking on a1, he may bring his knight to d4, which is probably a little better spot for him so he doesn't have his knight out of the way. From here, we can continue take on d5. Again, let's go ahead and take material. And he can't recapture with his queen or with his king because we have our knight here. At the same time, he can bring his king. Now, we really want to keep attacking, so we're going to bring our queen here to g3. Again, pinning down this pawn here. 
at the same time getting it away of this knight here on d4. Now it doesn't really matter where black moves, but next move we're really going to want to bring our pawn to d3 to, so that we can activate our dark square bishop. Again, the black king's in the middle, and we're starting to develop all of our pieces so that we can continue our attack. And the last move that you may come across, you may see knight to e7 here. And from here we can continue. We can actually castle on the king side, and then it doesn't really matter where black goes. A lot of times you'll see pawn to c6 trying to add a lot more pressure on this d5 square. And we can bring our rook to e1, getting ready for pawn to d d4, which is just a brutal move for black. Again, we have our rook that's pinning down that pawn on e5, and there's nothing that black can really do because once we play his pawn we can then activate our dark square bishop and we're really just going to be attacking the king in the center of the board until we checkmate him so this is the fried liver attack hopefully you guys enjoyed if you haven't already please subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video